Hello there, Cancers. So um, I have two really beautiful images for you. And I'm just, uh, I'm really glad to see these for you because it, it feels to me like the energy overall has been really positive. Um, I see you turning, you know, over a new leaf, trying to restart many um, areas in your life and looking at things through a different lens and tackling responsibilities, tackling problems, being able to extricate yourself uh, from situations that have not been serving you, that have not been good for you. So the first image that I saw was, um, it's a scene outdoor, very pastoral, very agrarian. There's like a dirt road with a few, um, it, it's dotted with puddles of water because it just rained, right? So there's a road here, there's fences, and it's like a pastoral environment. And I see this little toddler, he's probably three, four years old. He's wearing like a, a yellow raincoat, okay? So he's outside playing because it just stopped raining. And uh, he's jumping over the puddles. Like he, he's not splashing in the puddle. He's jumping one by one, jumping over the, the puddle. So what it denotes to me is, uh, it seems to me like you have um, left some emotional issues in the past, overcoming emotional issues, and especially getting a new lease on life, taking control of your life, really harnessing the disparate energies between you, uh, within you, to be able to move ahead. And you're doing so in a uh, really optimistic way. And so once the kid jumps over all the puddles, he looks up in the sky and there's this amazing rainbow at the end of the road and he runs towards it. Okay. He gets like a head start, uh, starts running towards that rainbow. So I feel like things are definitely looking up. The sun is coming out. So whatever situation you've been through, um, in March or even the beginning of, um, this month, I feel like you're taking charge and you're no longer falling victim to your circumstance for some of you. You're no longer allowing that to dictate your future and you're no longer bogged down in that space of emotional confusion or even emotional heaviness and imbalance. Okay. So that's really, really positive. And, um, I'm just really glad to see that for you. Um, the whole imagery of the toddler, it's somebody who's learning to walk, right? Like toddlers just recently uh, know how to walk. And the whole process about w being able to walk is you have control over your life. You're able to freely roam and explore your environment. You're no longer at the beck and call waiting for food, waiting for diaper change, waiting for attention so it, it's it's sort of like you know this this whole stage or this whole process of reclaiming your life having control and having that sense of agency uh over the decisions that you make and taking ownership of the decisions that you make okay so you have a lot of positive things the second image that i saw was um i do see like wings and feathers okay and um I, I saw it and I felt it, but I didn't know in what context it's coming through. So whenever we see wings and feather, and especially if I see it in like, um, you know, just in the course of the day when I'm doing something or I'm thinking about something, I usually think of it as, you know, divine protection, divine guidance. You are guided by your guardian angels, by your spirit guides, by whatever it is or whoever it is that you believe in that's guiding you or guiding the forces um, working behind the scenes or guiding your destiny. You are being divinely protected and you are as well being divinely guided towards a situation that is a lot better for you. Um, the scene that comes to mind um, is I don't know if we have a lot of gamers out there, people who play video games, especially the Final Fantasy franchise. Um, there's a scene in number nine and there's this guardian angel or well, it's a guardian uh, spirit. OK, so you basically you're a character in the game, you summon it and you have it do your bidding. So it's like a, a, a huge guardian force and it has white wings. And I remember the name was Alexander or something like that. Um, 
And so the, the city inside the video game, the city is under uh, attack. And so one of the main characters summons the guardian uh, spirit and he spreads out his wings and then he covers, I think it was the castle under his wings so that when the city um, is under attack, the cannons or the whatever is being thrown at the city, um, it hits him rather than it hits uh, rather than hitting the city. So I feel like there is an energy within you of protection, or you are being very very protective towards things that you now realize this is very precious to me. This is something very delicate. I have to protect it. I have to make sure that nothing can harm it. I have to make sure that I won't let anything, you know, interfere or I won't let anything in that might be considered like a bad spirit or a bad force. So I see you, you know, taking up the mantle, um, being able to protect the things that are really near and dear to and close to your heart. And at the same time, being able to kind of like proactively because I feel like you know a lot of water signs um, you and Pisces in general uh, Scorpios too when it comes to you know certain things but like you guys are a little bit more of the receptive sign okay it's like you wait for things to 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 kind of happen and then you kind of decide like how do I feel about this and then you react okay and I feel like fire signs are very proactive. They don't wait for things, they're kind of impatient. So they go out and, you know, uh, make decisions or act, and then things start moving for them, for good or, or for bad. But I feel like for, for many of you, you're a little bit more reactive. You kind of wait for things to unfold, and then you decide on your course of action. But this month, there is a major energy shift here where you are definitely more proactive and you're taking charge you're really in control in that driver's seat and you know uh, moving things along for yourself okay so whatever hurdles you've had to jump over whatever you know emotional hang-ups emotional issues emotional the, you know the, the the puddles on the ground right whatever emotional obstacles have been in your path Rather than kind of like wading through the water and splashing through the water, you're just like, there's a smarter way for me to overcome this. I just need to rise above and jump over it, jump over it, okay? So I feel like you are divinely guided and I feel like you're getting a confirmation from the universe that you're on the right track. Things are looking up and they are going to get better. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with your own personal energy wanting to make change, wanting to, you know, take control of your life and really be in that driver's seat. Whenever we actively, um, I want to say pray or even, you know, send out the intention that I don't want to lose control. I want to um, take back control. I want to regain my strength. I want to be able to, you know, steer my life in the direction that I want. Whenever we shout that out to the universe, the universe will put things in place to give us the opportunity to do so okay and uh, I'm seeing for some of you you want a chance to shine you want a chance to really really make your mark in the world you want to be taken seriously you don't want to be you know no longer behind the scenes you want to be on center stage and you want to be able to prove something to yourself it's not about proving to other people I, I feel like it's at a point where you're just like I'm determined, you know, kind of like in it to win it, like I said. Um, I want to prove to myself what my capabilities are. And I feel like in the past, you might not have had that chance. Okay, so for example, I'm seeing for some of you, um, you might be, you know, solicited by a higher up to work on a project. You're doing the research part. You're putting together the PowerPoint, the slideshow. And then the other person is the one when it's time to present, you're the one um, at the computer um, flicking to the next slide, the next slide, and then the higher up is the one that's presenting. So I feel like, you know, you, you want an opportunity to really prove yourself, to be kind of like in center stage, 
to be the one, not behind the scenes, but to be the one to, you know, disseminate information, share information with other people. And I feel like there might have been a lot of opportunities that came and went. And now you're just like at a point where you are seriously scoping out these opportunities, okay? Scouting, okay? So he's got that um, telescope and that sword in his hand. So this is the page of, so it's the ace of swords, excuse me. He, it's a scouting energy. It's like see, seeing an opportunity come in from a mile away and no longer hesitant, no longer like trepidatious, like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. You're grabbing life by the, by the horns and you're, you're seizing the day and you're just like, that's a good opportunity. I'm going to go for it. And what you're really scouting and looking at here, we have the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune is all of these little opportunities coming into the picture. Choose the right one and run with it. So I feel like you're definitely being thrust from behind the scenes into center stage. And you have a lot to look forward to. And you, you're you given many opportunities in the next coming months from now. I'm sensing until the October time frame where you can showcase your talents, where you can be on display, where you are definitely able to, you know, take an idea and run with it and not hold back and not let, let like self-limiting talks and self-fulfilling prophecies, especially in the past, to hinder your progress. OK, so that's that's really, really good. Um, what I'm seeing as well is there was a situation here. We have the five of coins and the five of coins is a need for you to have more control and better financial planning. So this is a card here when it's paired up with the wheel of fortune. I feel like it's not so much finance related. OK, it's, it's more like situations where we feel a little bit ostracized, where we feel like other people are not on board with our ideas and where we feel like we're lacking in some way. We're lacking in the drive or we're lacking in the ambition. But I'm also feeling with the Wheel of Fortune because this signifies destiny. This signifies like things that are larger than ourselves. And it deals heavily with destiny, um, it's like the, the path that you're meant to take, your sense of direction, your movement in the world, your ability to kind of like figure out what is my goal in life? What is my big purpose? What am I here for? And then I also feel like there was this overall sense of confusion and lack of a sense of direction. OK, so this is like having a lot of opportunities, but kind of like stuck in this little cave. Uh, dwelling in you know like self-pity or dwelling in 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 your circumstance so I, I usually look at this and forgive me cancer if it sounds a little bit harsh but it's like somebody who is a victim of their circumstance and you know all those pentacles are reaching out to this little creature in the cave right somebody has been extending their offers somebody is reaching out Somebody's giving opportunities and somebody has been kind of like nudging you. Come out of your lair, live your life, look around you. This place is very dank and dark and it's not a good place for you to live long term. For some of you, this might harken back to respiratory issues when it comes to like um, living in an environment that is not completely healthy. It's telling you to, you know, open the blinds, let the sunlight stream in. Look at all the opportunities around you. Look at what's outside of your immediate household. Look at what's outside of your immediate city. Expand your consciousness and expand your range. Scout a little bit further and, you know, cast a wider net. OK, so I feel like for many of you, the sense of direction has been very, very muddled lately. And you're feeling kind of like in this situation where if you have been looking for work, for example, um, sending out resumes and not getting the, the responses, OK, um, trying to apply for school and not getting the responses. And I also feel like it's a situation where there's a lot of people around you, but you're so determined to do it alone that you feel like other people are not understanding your struggle. 
And I feel like you might be dealing with somebody around you who is that way. Okay, so you, you might be dealing with someone who's either not emotionally supportive, who's not like, uh, who doesn't pander to more of that emotional side of you, who rather than, I, I feel like, you know, giving you like the, the, being your cheerleader and propping you up and guiding you and telling you, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. They kind of leave you to your own devices. And I feel like you've kind of had to, you know, work through, like, like, feel things out in this dark cave. And, you know, it's like walking through life blindfolded, not knowing exactly where you want to go, ultimately what your destination is, and having to figure things out from scratch and having to reinvent the wheel and having to, you know, muddle through life. And I feel like that sense is that that sense of you know lack of direction is finally coming to an end right underneath it we have here this is accelerated movement okay swift movement cutting through the darkness um this person's got like a little lantern on one hand and he's propelled by this um it's a rocket so this is like a lot of swiftness a lot of fast forward movement a lot of communication that will kind of break the ice and a lot of communication back and forth that will basically lure you away from this dark and dank space that emotionally you've been stuck in for some time so i definitely see forward movement forward um, advancement and I, I also feel like for many of you, especially if you've been single for quite some time, we do have new love offers coming into the picture. I have here the Page of Cups. And what I'm seeing here is um, there's somebody who's very concerned about you, okay? I have here the Nine of Swords, worry, anxieties, uh, thinking about worst case scenarios, wondering like, you know, is that going to come to fruition or you know are my worst fears going to be realized once again that energy about self-fulfilling prophecy i feel like you're getting a lot of support and a lot of like outreach from other people i do have a love interest here and in particular this is somebody who is communicating very very heavily with you back and forth back and forth i'm seeing like a ping pong ball almost back and forth back and forth um there might have been a either a physical distance between you and this person or like an emotional rift between you and this person and you might have felt like five of the the five of pentacles you might have felt like the hermit you're trying to find your sense of direction and you're kind of like uh sequestering yourself trying to do this on your own because um i, I feel like cancers you have that um you have that, um, you know, the, 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 the hard shell, right, for protection, but the inside, the, the fleshy part, it's all very delicate. It's all very human, right? And so I feel like, you know, in, in your ability, in your, you're trying to be very, very stoic and you're trying to get through situations on your own. And I feel like they're telling you, you, you don't have to prove that to anybody. You don't even need to prove it to yourself. This is the, the month where, you know, outreach, having other people on your side, reaching out to others and reciprocating when others reach out to you. That's where the connections will be made. And that's where you're going to be able to kind of emerge from this dark, dank space and kind of like come into your own. OK, feel whole again, feel good again. And I also feel like if you felt like I'm very much alone on this journey, no one really, really understands me. There is going to be communication and especially a major big gesture of love, somebody who really, really cares about you and they're checking up on you. They're asking, you know, are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you? I have a very strong uh, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Virgo. And we have here the Page of Swords. And this is somebody I feel like they're bringing a lot of clarity in your life, okay? So any of the uh, aforementioned signs, okay? P uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, and a Virgo. 
So this to me denotes somebody who's bringing a lot of communication, a lot of guidance, a lot of like, you know, cutting through the BS, a lot of clarity. Somebody who is really helping you scout out your territory, um, really sitting down with you and telling you, here are your options. What would you like to do? How would you like to proceed? And so if you felt like you've been in a situation and it just seems like, you know, round and round and round and round, we go like that merry-go-round. When is it going to end? When is it going to stop? When am I going to be able to, you know, exact some major, major change in my life? I feel like this person is providing some type of a insight, spiritual wisdom, spiritual insight, being divinely guided by your guides, as well as whatever it is that you believe in, whatever entity that is working behind the scenes in order to make things fall into place, okay? So this is like spiritual insight, shining a light on a situation and trying to understand the situation, trying to get clarity, trying to look at things from all different perspectives. Because once you shine a light on it, once it's already discussed, once it's out in the open, it's that elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about. But once the light has been shined on it, we realize, you know what? This is a problem. We need to do something about it. So let's crowdsource. Let's, um, you know, communicate with each other and figure out. Let, let's keep each other in the loop. Let's constantly communicate and try to figure out how do we move forward? And so I feel like for many of you, um, this situation might have happened. I feel like, you know, September of last year. Yeah, September of last year, something happened in the September time frame. Virgo, this is a uh, September energy here. And I feel like with the Wheel of Fortune, it might be the previous time frame. Okay, so whatever happened September of last year, I feel like it was very, very life changing for you. Something came into the picture, new opportunities. And I feel like things happen really, really fast. It's almost like, you know, life was going along. It was like kind of dragging along. And then something happened, September came. And then you felt like you were pulled in multiple directions. You felt like life was happening to you rather than you were in control of your life. So this is the month where you're just like, stop. I'm taking back my control. I'm the one steering my rocket. I'm the one guiding it where to go. I'm the one with this, you know, um, torch. I'm the one figuring things out. So I feel like you're no longer allowing things to happen to you. You're taking charge and you're steering your life in the right direction. And what's coming in is as well, a lot of emotional contentment and a lot of emotional happiness. And we also have a situation here, four of cups, feeling almost like there's a lot of opportunities that are in front of us. We're all emotionally invested in each one of these uh, opportunities. So which one do I go with? So there is a little bit of a, an indecisiveness, but I feel that you're not going to let this situation um, interfere with your forward movement and the accelerated rate in which you're moving things along. What you're doing, once again, this is a card about control. She's got that globe in her hand and she's guiding it from one place to the next, okay? So the two of wands is sort of like no longer stuck in that ivory tower watching life happens in front of us. This is like stepping out of it and applying theory to practice, getting an opportunity to prove yourself, getting an opportunity to showcase your talent, getting an opportunity to kind of like put your foot down and take back control of your life. And you're doing it so in a very big way, okay? And I feel like no matter what, you are divinely guided. There's a lot of spiritual energy here, people, entities working behind the scenes in order to create and clear up obstacles in your path for you. But I feel like you're meeting the universe halfway. You're not waiting for things to just kind of like magically, you know, it's like that that parting of the sea. You're not just waiting to, to get there and like magically wait for the sea to part and for the path to form. 
you're working with your spirit guides, you're working with the entities, working behind the scenes, you are able to figure out, you're really able to figure out, this is what I want, this is the path that I want to head towards, these are the things that I want to achieve. Because I feel like in the past, you know, it was just a matter of keeping everything afloat, right? Like juggling, making sure you don't drop the ball, making sure everything is done in a timely manner. You rarely had time to have like a breather and to really figure out what's the end of this? Like, what's the end goal? I'm just, you know, staying afloat, keeping all the discs in the air, keeping all the balls in the, in, in the air, not dropping the ball. But ultimately, what is that singular ultimate goal like what what is that ultimate destination what is that ultimate um path and i feel like you have not been able to find that for quite some time and now you're able to and you might have felt like you know time was ticking too and so with with the time ticking you might realize that i need to get a move on I, I, I can't sit on the sidelines anymore and I need to be able to, you know, be the one to write that chapter in my own life and not just sit on the sidelines on the ivory tower or, you know, just on the sidelines of life watching things happen to me that I have no control over. So it's a it's really a reading about self-empowerment and it's really a reading um, about Finding hope again is what I'm sensing. Um, let me talk a little bit about your love situation. Okay, so give me just a moment. There is a message here that I'm trying to get out, but I need a few more cards. Four of Cups. What is this in relation to? Okay. I usually look at this as uh, walking on eggshells, okay? It's somebody who's kind of like, woe is me, okay? Looking at, he has on the one hand a lot of options, but on the other hand, he's looking at the water and he's all like, I want this other big, 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 big option. For some of you, you're in a space where there might be power struggles, there might be like power differential, there might be like power dynamics within your relationship. One person wants to go one way, the other person wants to do things another way. One person has a dream to, you know, live in Florida, the other person wants to live in like Seattle. Uh, one person wants to work overseas, the other person wants to stay in the continental US, for example. So I feel like there are a lot of like, ideological <clears throat> as well as philosophical and you know career and 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 just a lot of aspirational differences between you and the person that you're dealing with and so with the chariot card in the reverse if you see it in the upright position it's like the two horses headed in different directions and then as a result of that it's really hard for two people to move forward it's really hard for two people to decide like, what do we do? What is our relationship going to look like next year? What is our relationship going to look like five years from now? So I feel like you're dealing with somebody who might want different things in life than you do. You're dealing with somebody that you're trying to work together as a unit. Like you, you want to, you want teamwork. You want cooperation. You want togetherness. So for example, if you're cooking, you want them to do the dishes. If uh, you're chopping up vegetables, you want them to marinate the meat, for example. You want a lot of teamwork. Um, Cancerian people want like to share that experience, every single experience with another person. And when it's in the reverse, it's sort of like when you want to cook, they want to watch TV. If you want to cuddle and watch TV, they want to go outside. So I feel like there's energetic um, different energetic wavelengths that are running through you and a significant other and then i have as well queen of swords you might be dealing with an air sign aquarius gemini libra so this card five of cups is linked up with 
uh, this air sign. So let me just talk to you a little bit about air signs, okay? Um, whenever this card comes out, not so much the king of swords, but the queen of swords. Um, and you know, you can be dealing with a male or a female, whatever gender they are, and they're watching or, or you're dealing with them, or you could be a cross watcher. Whatever the situation, this is a, a person that has been through hell and back, okay? They might not have had like the most pleasant, um, supportive, stable childhood environment, okay? A lot of things happened to them when they were children. And I always see it with this, this court card. It's somebody that has been through their fair share of like having to grow up really, really fast, possibly dealing with poverty. Life was not a bed of roses and life was hard. And I feel like, you know, they've experienced in the first, in the first like 20 years of their life, they've experienced a lifetime of situations that other pe people have not experienced. Okay. So like they're wise beyond their years. They've overcome a lot in life. And this is not somebody who's a victim of their circumstance. And this is not someone who's very tolerant of weaknesses. So you're dealing with someone who's a little bit like hardened, who's um, difficult to approach, who's a little bit skeptical, who's, uh, who's a cynic. And it's linked up here with the Five of Cups. And I'm feeling like, you know, there's a lot that has been said and a lot that has been, that has happened in this relationship. And I feel like this is the month where the two of you kind of, you know, really open up and bear your soul to one another because I do have a soulmate connection here. You have the three cups that are already, you know, knocked over. Too much has been said. Too much has been done. Too much has happened in this relationship. Too much time has passed. But then we also have the two cups, which is, you know, the friendship, which is the, the deep down on a spiritual core. The two of you want the same things. You just want to be loved. You just want to be... Um, you just want to trust one another. You want somebody to, to like um, call family. You want somebody to come home to at the end of a hard day's work. You both want the same things. It's just the individual routes that you take might not, you know, coincide. But ultimately, at the end of our of, of the day, when you strip away all the exterior, you and the other person wants the same thing. And somewhere along the way, things got a little bit lost. They might have been harsh with their words. They might have made you feel like a little bit left out. They might feel that you're leaving them out in the cold. They might not be very sensitive to your emotional needs, but air signs don't understand innately, you know. What does it mean to have emotional needs? They don't really know how to fulfill that. And I, I feel like it's really important to talk about these things because we don't come, you know, like we're, we can't read other people's minds. So we have to let them know what we need, what we want to be emotionally happy. And if we tell them and they're not, and, and, and like they're made aware of it, but they refuse to do the things that we tell them then we have a good reason to kind of walk away, right? But I, I feel like there's something here that can be salvaged, that can be reignited, that can be resuscitated, that can be uh, brought back to life. And I feel like it's just a matter of looking at your priorities, you know, casting your eyes in the right direction and looking at what's still salvageable. So all hope is not lost. So I feel like for some of you, um, you're dealing with an air sign. For others of you, there's a huge gesture outpouring of love between you and another person. You might be taking a trip to come see this person. They might be taking a trip to come see you. The Eight of Wands is greatly about travel and movement. And then there's like that, you know, the, the outpouring gesture of love. Some of you are getting a lot of communication, um, like text messages. If you're even online dating, a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, attention okay but you're also dealing with somebody who's who's quite popular too and i feel like you know you're you're looking at them like wow life is really you know it's like the universe is really answering my prayers bringing somebody who's pretty amazing 
bringing somebody who's very independent. And it's funny, um, Cancerian people are really, really drawn to partners who are very, very independent. And, and then I feel like, you know, you want a lot more together time with your partner, but they're so independent they, that they might not be aware that you need that. So at the onset of the relationship, it's very exciting. And then over time, you feel a little bit left out because this person has a gazillion things uh, that they're doing. They're constantly on the go. They're constantly outside the house. They're constantly like, you know, um, they're always off doing their own thing. And so... I feel like there's a lot to be said here about, you know, really being able to um, know yourself, to, to tell another person, here is what I need in order to be happy in a relationship. So some things I feel like need some tweaking, but overall, things are salvageable, okay? Like it, it can be rebooted, it can be fixed, it can be recycled, it can be transformed. So all hope is not lost, okay? I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Um, I feel like, you know, you have definitely come a long way. This is a major maturation process here. And I don't mean that in a, um, in a condescending way. And I don't mean to say that in a condescending way at all, but I, I feel like you have some major, major um, strides. Like you've taken, you know, you, you've really, really taken control of the situation. You're starting to look at things in a more linear way rather than taking all these little detours that kind of lead to, you know, roadblocks and dead ends. You're channeling and harnessing your energy and you're, you're walking on the straight and narrow path to get you to the, it's like the quickest route to get you where you want to be without the distractions, without all these little detours. And that's really, really good for... <laughs> For, for you guys, but like for, for you and the Pisces, it's, it's really, really good. So I'm starting to see that energy a lot more. And um, it's good on you, okay, Cancers? I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you're looking for a reader, if you are in need of spiritual guidance, I have included a link in the description box below. It is for a psychic. Uh, she's based out of California. Her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I highly re recommend that you get a reading with her if you're looking for a reader, okay? Um, I will be back in about a week and a half or so for your uh, next month's reading. Take care of yourself and I'll talk to you guys soon.